Welcome to the Home Design Mentor Channel. I'm California architect Steve Rundell. In part three, we talked about making your home look inviting from the outside. We learned that a welcoming entrance is more friendly to your guests. Garages should have simple features and not dominate the front of the house. Now, let's go back inside and talk about closets and bathrooms. Do nightmares hide in your closet between overlapping rods? Hint. A proper walk-in closet has no scary corners stuffed with clothes. You've probably seen those awkward corners where closet rods meet. It's like a black hole for clothes. Stuff gets chugged in, never to be seen again. Now, look at this closet plan. It's only 5 feet wide, so you can only hang clothes on one side. If you placed another rod at the end, as shown here, you traded two square feet of storage for an extra one foot of linear hanging space, which created a very awkward corner for clothes. And that angled wall at the other end is paradoxical. You are better off designing a standard wall closet than having a poorly designed walk-in closet. Walk-in closets should feel luxurious, not like a maze. So avoid overlapping rods and corners. Instead, let the rod extend to the end wall without overlapping hanging space. A proper walk-in closet should be at least seven feet wide. That gives you a nice three-foot corridor down the middle because clothing hangs at a depth of about two feet. Two feet on either side leaves you a three-foot path down the center. You can easily see and reach everything. And here's a tip. If you have space at the end of your closet, add wall-mounted storage like a rack for ties and belts or hang a mirror. So, when designing closets, stick to straight walls and give yourself plenty of space to move and see everything. By the way, this is an example of a wall closet. The depth is the standard two feet. Double, sliding, or bifold doors should access these closets. Design the seven foot wide walk-in closet or two foot deep wall closet for the average house. You'll see many other configurations but other dimensions waste space and function poorly. Do your clothes have a dysfunctional relationship with your closet? Hint, do that jacket a favor and keep it parallel. You can see in our sample layout that the closet is perpendicular to the doorway. When you walk in, you go straight into the clothes. You have to turn left or right to reach the other rods. The angled wall on the left creates almost useless space that's hard to reach when the closet is full. Also, there's no such thing as a hanger that fits a 45 degree angle, making that bit of rod at the end pointless. For the best results, design storage and rod space in neat straight lines. And yes, you can have much more space in a walk-in wardrobe, which I like to call the glamour closet. The sky's the limit with that concept and its dimensions, but you still want to avoid those overlapping corner rods. Is an operable window in the shower a high-risk activity? Hint, place windows where access is optimized and logical. In this bathroom area, we found another common quirk, a small window mounted high up on the shower wall. If the window is operable, you have to step into the shower to open it. This is inconvenient if you don't want to take a shower at that moment. It makes no sense to place windows that open in hard-to-reach places. A smarter idea for this floor plan is to put an operable window on the wall between the shower and the vanity counter. This window can be larger than the one set into the shower and provide more light to the bathroom. You can also easily access it to open it. This 5 foot wide by 8 foot long bathroom layout is common in many American homes. It's efficient and keeps the plumbing along a single wall. If it backs onto an exterior wall, placing a window above the toilet works very well. Is that floor plan lying to you? Hint, make sure features shown in the layout confess their true dimensions. Some people are not able to read two-dimensional plans that well. The problem magnifies when plans don't show features to the correct scale. Most designers now help clients by working with three-dimensional computer-aided design models. The models allow homeowners to see images of the new spaces as they appear in reality. However, floor plans still play a critical part in the design process and provide an initial path 
to developing a home design. Features must indicate the correct scale used in the layout. When reading a plan, it is best to have a few key dimensions understood. The most important dimension for a closet is that wardrobes require a clear depth of 24 inches for clothes to hang, with enough space behind and in front of them. I prefer to illustrate the full hanger depth on closet floor plans. The catch with our example plan is that it shows just a shelf in the closet. Shelves in closets above hanging rods are customarily between 14 to 18 inches deep. This closet might look big, but it's not because the hanging space is not illustrated. Plus, the door swings awkwardly into it, just like in the powder room. The out-of-scale problem goes for anything in a floor plan, so keep an eye out for these things when reviewing plans. Is it embarrassing to know the dimensions of a toilet? Hint, only for people who don't use them. Some people have trouble reading two-dimensional plans, and this problem gets worse when plans don't show features to the correct scale. We now have three-dimensional computer-aided design models, which allow homeowners to see images of the new spaces. However, floor plans play a critical role in the design process and are the first step in creating a home design. Features on these plans must be drawn to the correct scale. In the U.S., most plans are drawn at one quarter of an inch equals 12 inches, or one foot. Incorrect scaling can be a problem for anything in a floor plan, so keep an eye out for these issues when reviewing plans. Please click the like icon below the video and then subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. To design better bedrooms and hallways, check out the fifth episode in this six-part series. By clicking the video icon you see on your screen now, just hover your mouse cursor over the small boxed image and click it to learn even more about residential design secrets. Build your happy home.